Right, so we wish to be educated. You mentioned the Kenya Copyright Board. Correct. Let's assume I didn't know that exists. Yes. What else exists? What else exists? What uh, else? As a board, as a body, as a... For copyright issues, there's the Kenya Copyright Board, which is a parastatal um, under the state law office. For industrial property issues, there's the Kenya Industrial Property Institute. And then there's hundreds, I would say, of law firms. But you could argue that, okay, let's, you know, for the sake of argument, let's yes. argue that the government, the state is the enemy, to use a sort of like, <laughs> it, it is. Okay, okay, and, and let's doing follow that through. For, yes. mm -hmm. uh, what about the idea of in other, quote unquote, Western societies, you have the idea of the Screenwriters Guild, and if they're writing friends or neighbors mm -hmm. and they're not being paid enough, then they're all down tools. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the, uh, the actors, actors' equity, you can't get on. Uh, will we in Kenya move to these exalted highs? And I, how long will it take? Okay. We're, we're 50 years old. Does it take 50 years to create a screenwriter's guild and actor's equity? Not if the need and the desire is there. You will notice that a lot of the organizations you're speaking of were actually initiated by the rights holders themselves. A group of people with a common interest come together and say, this, there's something wrong in our industry. Something isn't working for us. All right. We need to fight things like piracy. We need to fight things like uh, not being paid if we're actors or crew members on a set. We need to fight things like uh, not being able to sell our CDs at a certain price because the distributors are probably taking a larger percentage. That is the thing that triggers the birth of these organizations. And that is already happening. I do know of a few that have already set up. They don't have very many members because people are cynical, and rightly so. It's not been an easy ride. And this is a perfect example of where the law is playing catch up because we've not even mentioned the, technology, the, John. An, Can you an, imagine? An, an, another example. Yeah. <laughs> in my uh, limi <laughs> limited, no, no semi-personal. Semi-personal. <laughs> in my limited travels, <laughs> yes. we, we traveled with Mr. Eric Wainaina with his play More Fire yes. to New York, mm -hmm. 2009 New York uh, Festival of Music. And my experience is that some people came around and created a track for the movements, for the lighting and the sound. Yes. And it became clear to us when, we, when they realized that we were basically misbehaving, that the reason we were misbehaving is that we were taking up too much time either to clear up. And so many seconds after our allotted slot to stop, get out of the dressing rooms or whatever, mm. people were charging overtime. Yes. Again. That's, will we, native Kenyans, come to this exalted stage? Because we know it's happening. Yes. You've traveled. Yes. You're a, you, in another incarnation, you're a singer. <laughs> yes. What? Okay, we've stopped blaming the system. Yeah. The system. Well, we're, uh, we're, we're not stopping to blame the system. We're taking ownership of our own failing as well. Right. And trying to find a solution. Right. So what would you say would be a great leap forward in taking part of that ownership? Musicians have. Musicians have. Uh, why musicians? The rest of us, uh, artists, actors? I, I, again, I'll, I'll fall back to society, I think, because I think even if we look historically, you've mentioned Kenya is 50 years old this year. And, and the one thing that has been, in terms of volume, uh, uh, music has won, let's put it that way. We have much more music content that has been created over the last 50 years than maybe films or, or any other type of art form, uh, not mentioning your sort of kikois and, and, and beaded work and things like that. But in terms of something that can be purchased and reproduced and played over a period of time, music seems to have taken the lead. And that's probably why we know of organizations such as CAMP, Prisk, MCSK, because those industry members have come together to see what is it that we can do to make our existence and our trade, artistic trade, better. So I feel that part of the solution, because I do think there's hope, and I have seen, even in the few years that I've been in this particular industry, I have seen some improvement, and I believe and dream that there will be much, much better, uh, uh, much, much better, a much, much better situation in, in, in this let's say not so distant future. What I would say specifically is, if the rights holders can take charge, take some ownership and say, I will invest in going for this seminar this weekend and put my tools down for an entire week and go and learn about 
how to protect my intellectual property, how to be a good business person in as far as running my trade or my art is concerned, how to pay my taxes on time, how to keep my money coming in and my accounts in order. Because let's not, let's not forget that creation and art for art's sake is beautiful, but that's going to be for you and me to enjoy alone. What is that artist going to live off? Are they going to pay their rent? Are they going to feed their families? We, there's that other side, and that's the challenge I want to throw to the creative entrepreneurs out there. That's why we give you that title. You are an entrepreneur. You are trying to earn a living. Why did you not go and study medicine, for example? Maybe you had both skills. You alluded to the fact that I sing as well, but I do have both hats. I am a lawyer and I also sing. But it doesn't mean that if I didn't have the skill of law, for example, that I would be you know, suffering or not able to, to survive and earn a living from my art. It should be possible. And that's why I'm saying as much as the system needs to be in place and provide a level playing field and give artists or all creatives a, 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 an open space, an open safe space to do their art and earn a living, the artist also needs to invest. Right. Uh, I'm going to take you on the word collaboration. Again, the artist to artist. Yes. Uh, this idea that you and I are doing something together. I give you a, yes. a collabo. Yes. We're writing a play uh -huh. and whatever. Uh, should we fight over the ultimate ownership? Again, are there legal instruments in place to make us quite aware of what that collaboration entails long term? Another very good question, John. But what I would say is this. I don't think fighting is the right word. Um, I would say discuss it before we sit down to collaborate. If you and I have our initial conversation and go, it would be cool to, to put this play together, June. Yes, yes. All right, let's have coffee. At that coffee meeting, believe me, John, I will carry my writing pad and I will go, all right, what, what exactly is it that we're doing here? What are you doing? You're writing the script and what am I doing? And document even in the most simple form I'm not saying bring in a lawyer to start drafting 50 page contracts. I'm saying June and John have a meeting of the minds and put down together what their intention is. Once that's done, you're sort of free to start engaging together with an element of trust because we will have also said what happens when this becomes the next big thing, okay, it's the next big movie, it's the next big play, and money starts trickling in. You and I may not be engaging at the same level, and we may not even be sitting down to have coffee because money has entered the equation. But if we sit down and go, let's just do a 50-50 split, or you go, no, 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 June, listen, you're a young girl, you just started writing these things the other day, mm -hmm. I've, I've done this a few more years than you, how about we do 70-30? If we actually agree, then that's what we document. If we fast forward to a bad scenario where we don't have this conversation and we end up in a court of law, the judge will ask, John, what, was, what did you and June sit down to discuss? Exactly. Was there actually a meeting of the minds? Did you actually leave that coffee table with the exact same uh, uh, resolution in mind? And if the answer is no, then technically speaking, there was no contract. And, and that's what I think would need to be happening right at the beginning instead of fighting about it later on. Right. We must end. We haven't exhausted this topic, but we must end. And I'm going to ask you, basically, for some free legal visual advice. Did you say free? Yes. In as much as we're looking to the future, I've written, what would you advise the viewer now if they see themselves as creative entrepreneurs yes. to start thinking about the stumbling blocks that lie ahead and beyond our own existence? You've died, I've died, we've left people behind. Our we're next going to of kin, we're yes. going to next of kin, we're going to benefit for this wonderful song that you wrote and sang. What you know, the, the, how many are there? Should we go for three, four, five tips? Do this okay. and you'll never be sorry. All right. Let's let's call it June's practical tips. Yes. <laughs> All right. The first thing you would need to do um, as the creative who is coming up with this idea is to treat it the same way you would treat your house. Give it the same value that you would give physical, tangible property because people will respond in kind. If I say my song has value and I then do what I would do to protect my house, go in, get an insurance cover, go in, protect your song, get it registered at the copyright board and then put contracts in place. If you don't know how to do a contract, consult a lawyer. The copyright board offers for free legal advice and revision of contracts. So that's the first thing I would advise them to do. And then just hold it, police it, protect it, claim it as your own, and don't get, 
don't get uh, sort of uh, overwhelmed with digital technology. Use it, but be very clever and be wise about how you engage in such platforms. June Gashui, intellectual poverty lawyer. Thank you so very much for coming on the journey. You're so welcome. Thank you for having me.